<laughs> I just unmuted myself. I almost forgot to mute, unmute myself and I would have been talking to you guys muted. <laughs> There's been worse things that have happened. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Good to see you guys all here. Thanks for everybody who um, joined me for the premiere. I know the notifications were all crazy sauce. Uh, the community tab was acting bananas earlier today when I put up the post of that I was going to be doing the stream and doing a premiere. I just kind of wanted to give everybody a heads up. And then I know Comrade Sammy commented and Mark's Music Obsession commented, but and I replied, but then I saw I couldn't see the comments. And after I saw them the first time and after I replied, I couldn't even see my reply. And it was it was a mess. But it said that I had replied like there was like five or six replies, um, but I couldn't see them. And I kept refreshing and I was telling you guys I was looking at another browser to see what was going on. So I don't know what was going. And then it seems like Emo Trash said that she got the notification for the premiere when I sent the no notification for the, or when I sent the schedule for the live stream. I don't know what is going on YouTube. How can we do these things if your structure doesn't work? But it's okay. Um, I'm thankful that I'm here. Thankful that we made it. Thankful for everybody that came and watched that premiere of Rook Exodus. I uh, literally finished video, finished that video this morning, and um, I really enjoyed that book. If you guys didn't tell from the stream, um, I I enjoyed all three of those books actually. So if any one of those won, or any any one of those got picked for the poll. I would have been totally happy doing the closer look review um, because I enjoyed them equally and for different reasons. But I'm very impressed with what Ghost Machine is doing and how strong they came out of the gates. And apparently I read somewhere that those are supposed to be monthly books, all three of those, Geiger, Redcoat, and Rook Exodus. So that's really impressive. They must have, like... Um, what do you call it? Not backlogged, but they must have like, you know, done a few books already in order to keep that kind of schedule. Cause those, those books are high quality for sure. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, uh, fingers crossed that, that they can keep it up because they were very, very good stories. I liked all the characters and, um, I'm excited to keep reading about them, but let's check in the chat. First of all, and acknowledge all the great people that are here. Comrade Sammy, for the record, I was here first. You were. You were fast. With all the not broken notifications, you still got in here fast. So um, you must know the secret passageway into the YouTube chats, into the streams. <laughs> so, um, and you know you're fast. So I love that. Uh, emo Trash is here. We are in an <laughs> eternal minute. <laughs> yeah, my... Uh, like I always say, there's just so many plates and so many buttons and levers to push when I stream. And I think I probably make it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. But uh, I hit go. First, I schedule it. And then once you schedule it and it it hits the time that you schedule it for, you still have to hit go. So you could like schedule it for 8.15 and just be sitting there. Nothing happens. It doesn't automatically turn on, which is probably a good thing. But sometimes I forget to hit go. Then you hit go, and then my first um, scene is that intro countdown to give me a second to get settled and make sure everything's okay. And I usually do like a two minute run, but since I had the premiere playing, it gave me time to do all the prep. So I did a one minute countdown, but also on that counter, it's not automatic when I hit that scene to go. I have to press play on the counter as well. <laughs> so. The counter was just stuck there for a minute, for an eternal minute, as Emo Trash says. Art and Times of Jay Ryan is here. How are you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for coming to the live stream, or to one of them. <laughs> um, I'm glad you made it. John is here. Hello again, all. Seeing everybody. And it's good to see you, John. And then Awesome One <laughs> says, did I miss it? <laughs> well, not really. He just missed the other one. <laughs> but um, 
it's great that you're here. So uh, thanks for coming. Let's see. Uh, he said, awesome one actually said, I uh, just finished watching Jack Hibbs 13,000. We're watching that. Wow. <laughs> I don't even know who Jack Hibbs is. I'll have to check that out. Or should I? 13,000 people watching. That is, that would freak me out. I mean, that'd be cool. But I think at that point, you must be like numb. Like for those huge YouTubers, you got to be numb after that point with that many people watching. It's like, I don't know, that would freak me out. I tried to picture it in my mind just based on people, right? So like the people that show up in the chat, I'm like, oh, it's the same as if you walk into a room of that many people and you just start talking to them about whatever, giving a presentation or whatever. And, uh, you know, for the most part, chat's super manageable for me at this size. But I, I mean, getting beyond like 30 people <laughs> in the chat, a hundred, I can't even imagine getting over a hundred. That's like, that would, that, and then try that. Like, if you imagine that in real life, like trying to talk to all those people and like manage a conversation with all those people, like that's crazy. I don't know how people do it. Uh, I know how they do it. They, they are, they're pretty methodical about how they do it, but I think I would, I would go crazy because I try and comment on everything. Um, Let's see, I saw somebody here. Oh yeah, Jolly Green, hey Jolly Green, how you doing? Good, thanks for coming in and uh, showing up on this Wednesday. Um, Emo Trash says, the stream notification has yet to arrive. I might see it by the time I get up for class in the morning. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, uh, it's something's going on in, in YouTube land. Um, John asked a great question when the uh, start of this stream. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, here he goes. Rocky, do you know if your promo vids have driven any traffic to the shops? And yeah, as a matter of fact, it's so funny. So the um, video that I showed before this stream was for Mission Comics, and that was the store I went to today. So that's why I put that video up. And um, that store opens at noon, and I kind of walked in close to noon. Like I was in the area and it was just opening up. So I walked in there and just was looking at the new books and the owner Leaf was there. But I, I don't think he saw me because I kid you not, as I was like looking through the new books, I get a notification, email notification. And I, was, I looked at my phone and it was from Leaf. And I was like, well, that's weird. <laughs> like I'm standing right here. Why would you send me an email? But he was sending me an email because... I guess he's going to be on this local TV show, like highlighted on this local TV show as a business owner, maybe about comics, but definitely as a business owner. And uh, he asked if he could show my video or share the video with the, the um, broadcaster or the uh, show people so that they can air it. So I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. And, you know, as long as he gave me credit for it and he said he totally would. So. That's great. That's great that that can be used at a bigger platform, potentially, and that he saw the value in it and um, wanted to show it as promotion. So I'm pretty excited that um, that, that happened for him. And uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully that'll lead to more promotion for his store. Maybe people see the video. I don't know, like and say, oh, well, you know, well, Rocky did that video. What does he do? So um so yeah, hopefully that'll drive people to this channel. And then the other thing about that, and it just happened last week, was um, somebody commented on the Amazing Fantasy video, which is another store I go to, Frank's store. And uh, Frank's great. He always tells me he's watching my shows, might be watching right now. Um, but he, uh, somebody commented on the video and I got the not notification for that. And uh, this guy was like, hey, this is my local comic book store. This is a great video. And I was like, oh, cool. So I said, hey, and I wrote him back and I said, hey, let um, Frank know that you saw it on my channel. He'd really appreciate that. And then like a couple days later, the guy wrote back and he said, oh, I talked to Frank. And, you know, he was like super stoked about the video, just stoked about like promoting local businesses and the community and just supporting Frank. So it was cool. It was a cool little, that's exactly why I wanted to do those videos. And it's cool to kind of see some of that results come to fruition. And then shortly after, I don't know if this was connected to that guy commenting, um, but I got a whole bunch of views on Frank's amazing, on that video that I did for Amazing Fantasy. So 
Um, who knows? Yeah. So it's great. Um, so yeah, that is what's going on, John. Um, let's see. Yo, people of people. Jolly Green. I said hello to Jolly Green. Uh, awesome one says Floral on his stream did a community tab post and it wouldn't show until I used a different device. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Uh, we already looked at that one. Uh, awesome one gives a link. A link, <laughs> a link to Floral Under a Rock, a family puppet dream. Okay, cool. Awesome. I'll have to check that out. I always love all the recommendations. Rocky's looking. <laughs> Stop commenting. Let me catch up. Uh, Rocky overthinking something? Say it ain't so. Yeah. Even, even in the building of my streams, I overthink. <laughs> <laughs> Look busy. I am busy crying into a sketchbook. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are funny. You're like, like I just like uh like you guys are at a slumber party and I just walked into the room and turned on the lights. Uh, John says I think Gothics does a great job at pulling from the chat. I'd go crazy trying to stream and pull chats. Yeah, I've seen a couple of her streams that she did. She's so chill and like, I think there was one stream that I was watching that she did, and some guy was yelling at her in all caps, like all the time, like just consistently commenting and yelling at her in all caps. And she was like, dude, bro, I, I answered your question. And if you don't stop, I'm going to block you. And he just kept going and going. And she just kept giving him another chance over chance. And then she was at the end, she was like, all right, I'm blocking you. <laughs> but she was like, so calm the whole time. Uh, okay, cool. Jack Hibbs. Awesome. I'll have to check that out. Awesome one. She was eating a salad on her... She eats a lot on her streams, doesn't she? I saw her eat like pasta last time on her stream. <laughs> Must be a thing. John says, going to warm up the Keurig. Be right back. Oh, wow. You're drinking coffee this late? Uh, are you a Keurig guy? I'm a Nespresso guy. So I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work out, John. <laughs> Keurig, Nespresso. Usually those, those people don't cross paths. Is he a pastor or what have you, awesome one? John says, that is awesome, Rocky. Promo fits for the win. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, so I, um, there was another store, another major store that I wanted to do the video. I think I'd mentioned it last stream, Isotope. And uh, when I showed up a few weeks ago, asked James if I could film in his stop, shop. And he, at whatever reason, he was like, not right now, it's not good. And then I told him, hey, whenever it's good for you, just let me know. And I haven't heard back from him. I should probably check in with him. I don't want to push it, though. You know, it's like, if it's not a good time, it's not a good time. Um, but I have been thinking about expanding out outside of the city. It'll take a little bit more time um, just to get out there. But like in the East Bay and down the peninsula, there's a few other quite a number of stores that I want to highlight that I really like there's there's a there's a few great ones in the East Bay that I want to go and and hopefully film at so um, I think it's about time I should start venturing out a little bit and expanding it and uh, see where that goes because I think it'd be really fun it'll be a all those stores all feel so different from the stores in the city and uh, they have different specialties and different things about their stores that make them great. So, um, so yeah, I hope to do that soon. Emo trash looks like you and I are in the same boat. My headphones are dead. I need to charge my phone so I can't use my plug-in headphones. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe we'll just, uh, we need a sign language interpreter. I need one of those like ASL bubbles show up in the corner. Somebody, somebody quick who knows sign language. <laughs> okay. Uh, da, da, da. Comrade Sammy, uh, though I did find that my earbuds were charged, my computer was just lying to me. Mm. Technology is failing us today, guys. Rocky, I suggested your stream to Australia's on Dean's chat last night. He ignored it. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, I don't even know who Australia or Dean, or to the country Australia. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so such a noob with all these streams. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much for suggesting it. I appreciate it. Dean is not a family channel, but a funny dude. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I, 
I don't know half the things you guys tell me about, but I always write them down and I, I go back and watch the chat and takes, you know, visit the link. So just keep, keep sending me links of stuff that you guys are watching because it's super interesting and you always find new stuff. I found this one guy, he had like, I don't know, like 44,000 subscribers and he was an artist and uh, he had this really cool YouTube kind of set up too. And, uh, but yeah, just kind of ran across it. YouTube algorithm shot his thing in front of me and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Subscribe. <laughs> uh, awesome one says, John, I'm drinking a Frappuccino. <laughs> None of that fancy Keurig Nespresso crap. I'm going Frappuccino. Uh huh. Are you in the city, Rocky? I am. Yeah, I am in San Francisco proper. So, um, so yeah, in the heart of the city. And uh, it, even though the East Bay is like, it's just over the bridge for us, and Marin is just over the bridge, like a 30 minute drive in distance, but it feels like it's another state. <laughs> There's a little bit of a like, uh, border territory where you're like, oh, you're from the BC. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where people say it's just over the bridge. And you're like, nah, that's too far. But I will go over there for comics because they have great stores over there. Dean calls himself the gutter trash of CG. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Art and Times of J. Ryan says, I had a coffee earlier, but sometimes I have the odd espresso. Yeah, I... Uh, I mean, you guys are all late nighters. I've seen you guys all. I know Art and Times J. 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 Ryan, you are drawing late often, so I can see the, I can see the espresso working for you. Um, don't worry. It's, is that don't worry, John? I don't remember that abbreviation. I'm gonna assume it's don't worry. It's decaf. Does decaf really work though? Like, I heard decaf is just less caffeine. It's not really no no caffeine. I don't know. I don't like, I don't like decaf. Dean James is equals comics mate. He's Australian. Okay. Gosh. Now I know. I had a monster like three hours ago and I've very much felt the crash from it since. <laughs> That's a little bit of a different, uh, a different rush is the, uh, the monster. That's just like sugar and adrenaline. <laughs> DW equals don't worry. Nice. Hashtag decaf lame. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, um, what, uh, so today I did go to Mission Comics and it was a surprisingly thin week today, to be honest. Um, I, I, there was a couple books that I thought I was going to pick up and I decided against it. So, for example, Helen of Wyndham was one that I had briefly shown on stream before the second issue looks great, but I think I'd mentioned and it's, it's what's going to happen is I will probably wait for the trade for that one. I didn't feel like, Oh, I got to buy the solo issue for that story. Um, but the artwork looked great. looked <clears throat> just as good as the first one. And then the other issue that came out, which I was thinking of getting, but I didn't was, Oh gosh. I totally blanked. Was it like Golgotha? What was that book? Hold on. Wouldn't be a stream if I was like, oh, what now? Oh, yeah. Golgotha Motor Mountain. I had reviewed this book. Or no, did I review it or I did a YouTube short on this book, on issue one? Um, I felt like it's like Breaking Bad meets... Walking Dead a little bit. And it was cool. The more I read about it, um, I think I've seen actually people describe it. Breaking Bad meets um, HP Lovecraft. So it's like, oh, that's cool. But I didn't really feel totally compelled to pick up issue two on that one. Like, it's tough to keep people like hooked in. Like the Transformers have been doing that for me. G.I. Joe has been doing that for me. I've been hooked in. Thundercats, I'm kind of waning on Thundercats a little bit. The last issue of Thundercats, I didn't pick this one up. Um, issue number three, they introduced Snarf. And 
I mean, Snarf was not the coolest character in the original cartoon, right? But he's part of my childhood, and like, you just have this picture of what Snarf is, and they kind of redesigned him a little bit. And I, when the second I saw it, I was like, mm, no, I was already on the fence with that title. Consistently, it's felt a little young for me. Um, and I do love Declan Shalvey, the writer. I love, I love him as an artist and a creator. But and the artist, his name's Drew Moss on Thundercats. He's good. He's solid. But yeah, the design of Snarf just was like, uh, it just made me go, well, nah, I don't really want to pick that up. And then I did pick up the new issue of Cobra Commander that came out. Um, but I've talked about Cobra Commander quite a few times on stream and on videos. I've done some YouTube shorts on it. YouTube short reviews on it. So I didn't feel like it should be another book, but that was actually the only book I picked up today. So I was like, well, then what am I going to do? Because I got to do a Wednesday comics and I can't let that die. I didn't get any packages today, uh, uh, this week yet. Um, so usually I do an unboxing on Monday because I sometimes get packages on the weekend. I've been consistently getting packages on the weekend, but I didn't get one. I checked my, uh, Amazon orders and there was a book that was supposed to come that got delayed so that probably would have been my unboxing video but that didn't come so anyway that all to say like this week has been a little thin for comics and I was like huh then what am I gonna do <laughs> so I started going through my collection I'm like I know I have lots of stuff that I can talk about that hasn't been overly talked about already and that's what we're gonna do in a second here Cranberry Langers, hey man, hey Rocky, hey everybody, I'm not here, just wanted to tell you that. <laughs> okay, that's a ninja move if I've ever heard one. I hope, well, you're not welcome then if you're not here. <laughs> I hope you've had a good week and I hope that the rest of your week that you're not here is good. Uh, but anyway, it's good to see you, Cran. Hope you're well. Emo Trash says, wrong, I drink the zero sugar ones exclusively because of diabetes. Oh, okay. So then, then what's the point of Monster? Isn't Monster just a sugar push? I must, I have it all. I don't, I have never drank Monster actually, so I wouldn't know. Mission Comics accomplished. There you go, John. That's a nice one. Yo, yo, Golgotha the X-Men book. No, no, it was uh, Golgotha the monster, whatever. What did I think? Our Orco is great. <laughs> Shelby. <laughs> How you doing, Shelby? Welcome, American Discord. Orco is greater than Snarf. I agree. A hundred percent. I agree with that. Ola Rocky, just here to lend my ear, working on some layered fires files. Hello, chat. Good to see you, Shelby. Um, I saw a couple of your yeah, there was one stream where you were streaming. I don't know what's the longest you've ever streamed, but I swear you were streaming for like seven hours because it's like it started. I like checked it out, started drawing. Uh, I think you were drawing the Nam drawing. And then I feel like it was like later that evening I checked and you were still drawing the Nam drawing. Maybe it was two different streams. I don't know. But I was like, is he still drawing? I mean, it looks amazing. But um, anyway, it's good to see you. And thanks for stopping by. Did Snarf transform into a dog? Hmm. Well, I mean, Snarf, he's kind of like that companion dog character in Thundercats. But yeah, the way that, yeah, he did kind of look more animal. I don't know. It wasn't good. I didn't like it. Everybody's saying hello to Shelby. Comics on a diet. Yeah, it was. It was kind of like comics, comics light. Which, uh, yeah, it was a little bit, I was like, oh, I thought I would find something on the um, sale rack. Maybe it was just the, the comic gods telling me, slow your roll, dude. You are buying way too much because I do have much, much to get through that I haven't read. Uh, a bunch of library books, all these kind of things that I have that I haven't read. I have been getting through a few, uh, like all those Ghost Machine books, those are pretty thick and they were great to get through, but Comrade Sammy says, Rocky, you're talking to you? Cranberry Langers isn't here. Oh, yeah, I was just talking to the 
talking to that log over there. <laughs> um, Rocky disses his bros that aren't here. <laughs> Uh, Shelby says, I'm chugging a pipeline punch monster right now. Oh, boy. It's going to be a long night then. <laughs> oh, boy. My no sleep streak shall continue. Okay, well, fine then, Cranberry Langer says. I appreciate it. I'm trying to finish editing video. I'm stretched it out over a week. I did see your stream, though, so sorry to miss it and hope your week's going well. And everybody else's week is going good, too. Are you editing... Another review video, I hope, huh? I really hope you are. That would be awesome to see. Um, I liked your last one, so I, I look forward to, to a new one that you'll post. Uh, mm -hmm. Good night. God bless everyone. Good night, Cranberry Landers. Hope you your editing, editing goes well. Um, and I hope to get a notification about that soon. I have a couple 12 hour streams. Unfortunately, everything over six hours cannot be edited. So I try to stick to less than five. 12 hour streams. <laughs> How do you do that? That's crazy. 12 hours, my gosh. I mean, I know it flies. Like after my streams, I'm like, whoa, that was like two hours, like just blow by. Um, but 12 hours, I don't even know how you do that. Don't talk about Shelby turning a sketch cover into a double. <laughs> I think that's what happened on that one. It looks great, man, though, but I think that's what happened. You care too much, Shelby. So long as Rocky has a wallet, there will be comics he has not purpose purchased. It's true. I got some of these like backer kit um, notifications from um, campaigns that I funded. They're like, oh, please update your mailing address. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot I forgot I backed that one. And then I got another one. I'm like, oh yeah, and I backed that one too. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Hey, some person. I don't remember subscribing to this channel. We'll see. Oh boy. Uh, quick, everybody do something cool. <laughs> some person is here. Um, hello. Hello. It's so funny because we're having, no we were talking about having notification problems and then you who don't remember subscribing got a notif notification. So, oh well. YouTube at its finest. But I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy our Wednesday time. We'll be talking comics. We're talking all sorts of weird stuff right now. Uh, Rocky under... I know. No, no stress. No, no pressure. No pressure. Goodbye, Cranberry, who's definitely not here. <laughs> uh, hashtag Cranda Man. Rocky finds this entertaining. I do. What's up, some person? Okay. So like I said... It was thin this week, um, but that can't stop me from doing my Wednesday comics. That's the whole thing. I can't give up on Wednesday comics. And I made a list of like, okay, well, I could do these books and I could do these books. And I actually came out with a huge list of different things. So I'm set for the weeks that uh, I don't find books. No worries. But this, this week, we are going to be looking at a book or a series of books that came out... Let me just make sure I get this date before I mention it. And this will probably be familiar to some of you guys and maybe not to others. So it came out in 2004, 20 years ago. Oof, <laughs> that's bad. Um, welcome some Rocky is lame. Thanks, awesome one. You're the best. Do something cool, uh, okay. <laughs> Sobs drawing into existence. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> John's just watching it all from his perch. <laughs> uh, emo, add some watercolors to those pages with your tears. Okay, so here's the books. These came out in 2004, 2005. And let me switch my view. All right, oops. Let's see my keyboard. This was a series that DC came out of called Solo. Are you guys familiar with these? You might be familiar with these. Um, I've seen, like, I think there's a compilation out now, or there has been a compilation out. But the thing I loved about these, and uh, Mark Chiarello, who was the creative director, I don't know if he's still the creator or director at DC, 
but he was kind of the guy from my understanding who was spearheading this series. Um, he, sorry, let me just rearrange my desk here. Um, he was spearheading this series and it makes so much sense because from every, I don't know Mark Chiarello, but from everything I've heard about him is he's definitely like an artist's artist. I, he's a great artist in his own right. He's a painter and an incredible colorist. Um, and just an artist in general. He's done some awesome stuff. But as the creative director, art director, creative director, he really brought in a lot of like hardcore artists, artists into the fold when, you know, under his direction. And so one of the things, <laughs> yes, I'm not ashamed of my keyboard. Um, one of the things that uh, one of the series that he brought in was this thing called Solo, which was such a great idea. And it was his way of highlighting certain artists, dedicating one whole comic to highlight certain artists. And so I was looking at, um, I was looking at my back issues and, uh, I ran across these. I hadn't looked at these in a long time. And I was like, oh, these would be kind of cool to talk about. These would be kind of, because a lot of the artists that I have of their stuff, I really like, I still like, and uh, it's just a neat, neat kind of thing to look a little bit closer for each one of these artists. Art and Times of J. Ryan says, yeah, I showed these off on a stream before. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. Darwin Cook, Jordi Brene, et cetera, had great solo books. Yeah, I'm missing one of the, my favorite ones. I don't know where it went. And I'm usually good about tracking myself, like knowing where my stuff is. So it's kind of bugging me that I'm missing one. I'll talk about that later. But I picked four out of the ones I have, and these will be the ones that will be up for vote um, at the end of the stream to see which ones I will do a closer look on. But so this was the first one. I believe this was the first issue that came out, which was Tim Sale. So the cool thing, I'll start flipping through them quickly. And um, but the cool thing is they included because it's just one comic um, dedicated to a particular artist they included a lot of like short stories and some of the artists I know did original short stories for solo. And some of them, they took little short stories that they had done for other compilations or whatever and put it all in this book. But um, I just love that it's kind of varied for each artist and you get to see kind of the, a wide range of their work. So here's him, here's uh, Tim Sale doing a Batman story which is cool. Um, and this is at the, you know, this, I think when this came out, he was at the height of like long Halloween and the other Batman stuff he was doing, but it's different than like an artist edition. That's just focusing on the like pencil work of this artist or like the behind the scenes work. It's like all these different little short stories or snippets of their work. And see, I love how like here we have like his long Halloween, Tim sales, long Halloween style. But then here it's like a watercolor story, which is pretty awesome. Emo Trash says 10 out of 10 keyboard. Key keys looked really typable. <laughs> awesome. That's a great review of my keyboard. <laughs> uh, yeah, she might have back issues with that posture <laughs> with this. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. But yeah, it's just cool. And then here he's doing a totally different style. It's like he does this like uh, old school coloring for this Supergirl story, this like Supergirl romance story. Pretty fun. And it's like this for each one of the books. Like each artist has, you know, different styles that they try out. So I just love that it showcased them this way it, if you didn't know the artist before you pick this up you kind of got a swath of their style and their work and then that would lead you to like oh i really like this artist oh sorry that's super bright um i like this artist and uh i want to know more about his work cool stuff so this is tim so tim solo tim sales book and unfortunately we lost tim sale couple years ago, uh, really sad. He passed away too young and he was a great work, great artist. I don't think I appreciated Tim Sale's work as much when I was growing up. 
Um, but I definitely really, really appreciate it now looking at his work now and kind of the body of his work. I have one of his books. Uh, go get it. This is a great book of Tim Sale's work. It's like a um, image put this out. It's called Tim Sale Black and White, and it's a whole book of his black and white art. This is a great book. There's Oh, there's that picture. There's the one from Solo. You guys remember that show Heroes? That show that came out in the 2000s, I think it was. Um, he was the artist whose comic book work was featured in Heroes. And at the time, that was at the time I was like, oh, Tim Sale, yeah, I know his work, but I wasn't a big fan of his work. But now looking back at it, I'm like, oh, man, he's so good. So, yeah, this is one, the first issue, Tim Sale solo. And then the next artist that I picked out of the solo is... Incredible Richard Corbin. What stream? Hmm, I don't remember any recent streams, Jay. Are you talking about his stream, talking about uh, Solo? <laughs> I'm sure it's out there. Hashtag we miss Jay. <laughs> Emo Trash should start a review channel of my own. You should, of keyboards. That would be amazing. <laughs> uh, it was a while ago, awesome one. I think you can do like a search, right? On YouTube, uh, within somebody's YouTube channel of like in Art and Times of J. Ryan, you could say solo and it'll probably show up. Let's see. I'm speaking about Jem Ryan, John. <laughs> okay. Hashtag 12 Cokes. <laughs> hey, K pop. Good seeing you here. What's up? Hey, K-pop saying hello, hello to everybody. Hashtag hot dog. <laughs> All right. Jay's been slacking. What? Jay's not been slacking? For somebody who's doing like a 52 cover challenge, that is not slacking. Uh, I think I saw... Was it? On, I think it was on Shelby's stream. He has a friend of his. I forgot his name. Apologies, but who's doing the fifty-two cover challenge as well? And I think Shelby's like ahead. He's like, "Yeah, I'm two weeks ahead." And I'm like, "What? How can you get ahead of that schedule? That's crazy." Um, okay, so the second book to look at is Richard Corbin's Solo. So this is again same format. And if you like Richard Corbin's work, it's a great. Great to see. I'll just be flipping through these pages relatively quick. And then at the end of the stream, you guys can help me vote. I'll open up a poll to vote on which one of these you want me to look at closer. There's so much to go through on all of these books. So, um, so yeah, it'll be fun. Any one of these will be fun. Love Richard Corbett's stuff. I remember seeing his work. When I was a little kid being first exposed to his work, what was that book that he did? Oh gosh, now I gotta look it up so I don't sound like a fool. It was, it's like his most famous thing or one of his most famous thing. Richard Corbin, Vic Blood, a boy and his dog. Have you guys seen that? That was like one of the first things I was exposed to a uh, Richard Corbin. And uh, I was like, what is like it? <laughs> it just made me feel so weird. It was such a weird, different style than what I was used to. Look at this short story. Like this is pretty standard Richard Corbin style, in my opinion. Like this is like if you say this Richard Corbin's drawing this book, I'd expect it to look like this. This one he did this like almost painted. I don't know, it looks kind of 3D. The way he rendered it has this like 3D quality to it, which is awesome. Then back to this pen and ink style, he's doing a Western story here. Always has like kind of a creepy horror vibe to his work. I love his, I love his exaggeration. All of his, his characters feel like they're made out of clay. 
and he has such a unique way of exaggerating features. I remember that story being very bizarre. He loves the zombie kind of stuff. He did a, a run on some Hellboy short stories, which were awesome. I think part of the reason that it, for this solo series that some of these artists did original stories um, was because so many of them have worked on Marvel books and Dark Horse books and what. And since this is a DC book, they could only include their DC work. So I think they had to do some original work. But like, look at the way that he rendered this. That looks like a real photo. Like, it's so weird. So cool. All right, let's see. Um, let me catch up here. Um, everybody's saying hello. I subbed Emo for one of your reviews. Uh, do you have a link for Sean's new channel? I saw the link. Somebody, somebody just posted it. Apparently, Sean posted about it in his community tab. Ah, here, awesome one said, Sean's new channel. I didn't even know about this channel. <laughs> he must have just posted about it today, right? Like, I didn't even know about it. But it sounds cool. If it's Sean, it's going to be good. Um, Art and Times of J. Ryan says, I am a few weeks behind on my sketch covers. I bring great shame to my family. <laughs> no worries, man. You're doing it. Like, you're going you're gonna to get, you're going to catch up. I, I have faith in you. <laughs> if not, hang on to your hats <laughs> for the last few months in this year. K-Pop Junkie, Junkie says, dishonor on you, dishonor on your covers, dishonor on your V-neck shirts. <laughs> That's pretty personal, K-Pop. Um, I'll never be caught wearing a V-neck. Never. <laughs> okay. Uh, Richard's one eye beast. Yeah. He's, 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 uh, he's quite a talent and, and he passed away recently too, didn't he? Just losing so many great artists. Okay. So that's book two. Just to recap, Tim Sale solo, Richard Corbin solo. Um, for those of you who haven't been on one of these live poll streams, what I do is I show, usually I show the books I picked up for this week, uh, on Wednesday. And then I leave it up to the, after the end of the stream or at the very end of the stream, what I'll do is I post up a community poll and everybody votes on which book they want me to do what I've been calling a My Wednesday Comics Closer Look video where I actually sit down and review the video and also give my rating at the end of it. I rate it on story, on world um, or genre, on the art style and the characters. And I just kind of just get, kind of give an overall review, but I did it that way because sometimes I get a lot of books, and if I do a whole video talking about all the books I got, it gets really long-winded, as you can tell. Um, so I like to be able to have the time to just focus on one book, and I thought, what better way of a to be able to focus on a book that people want to see as opposed to the one I pick? So this week was a little bit thin with the books that came out. So I went through my collection and decided to share this series. So there'll be four of these solo books and you guys can pick, we'll vote on which ones you think you'd like to see closer. I'll catch up just very busy with other things right now. Okay, cool. No worries. We, we don't judge you or at least I don't. K-pop does. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> that's exactly what I said. Pretty specific. Shant is competing with Dan Lawless since Shelby only teaches for money. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, both of the. I mean, is I did. To be honest, I didn't watch the video that he was talking about his new channel. So, is it a drawing stream, a drawing channel, a teaching channel? Shant, where are you? You were just here in my other stream. Um. So if that is, that's cool. Shant is, as you can imagine, Shant is a phenomenal teacher. So hold on to your hats. It'll be awesome. I can't wait. Um. All right, cool. Okay, so book three is Darwin Cook solo. Darwin Cook is one of my all-time, again, an artist that we lost. Uh, he's one of my all-time faves. I love, love, love Darwin Cook. Uh, he... 
I had I crossed paths with him. Not I didn't get to meet him, but I crossed paths with him because we happened to be competing in the animation festival at the time in the early 2000s. Not in the same category, thank goodness, but he was working on Batman Beyond and what he was nominated for was the title sequence of Batman Beyond. If you guys didn't know, Darwin Cook got his start in advertising and then he made a switch over into animation and started working with the Bruce Tim crew. Um, and he really kind of spread his wings on Batman Beyond. He was like a storyboard artist and designer. And then he started doing comics and he just skyrocketed after that point. And uh, I love Darwin Cook. Like he's incredible. So when he passed away several years ago, it was a really huge blow to me because I'm a huge fan of his work. Um, but I just love like he it's funny to talk about people who work in animation and then move into comics, which is very um, um, apropos to <laughs> myself. Um, but there's few routes you can go, right? Like people who there's a certain look that you can, a certain style that when you work in animation, you kind of gravitate towards because all the factors of animation, you're trying to make things eco economical, you're trying to make them so that they can actually move. So you simplify and, uh, you know, you go a certain route, your art takes you a certain route when you work in the animation world, especially 2D animation. Um, and then when you go back to comics, you tend to bring a lot of those stylistic influences with you. And um, some artists really embrace it and their stuff looks like animated work. Uh, there's a few artists that I can think of that are like that. And it's funny that I should go into this conversation right now because one of the things I was thinking of doing, and I'll probably do it for a Wednesday comics in the future, was showing books of animators that have done comics and kind of comparing those. So that'll be for another stream. But since we're talking about Darwin Cook, he is one of those people who's done that. And he, however, I feel like he took all the best of what he did in animation and took it to a whole nother level. And I feel like at his heart, he was more of a comic book artist than he was an animator. Um, because his storytelling, his just, his, um, the decisions he made to tell a story and how he crafted a story, the writing and the pacing and everything were just so made for comics. Um, but the cool thing about this solo is that he runs through, again, a bunch of different styles. And you can see some are more simplified than others. Uh, some are more gritty. And look, this one comes from, like, you can tell this is like from his illustration days, right? When he was working on advertising, like that's a certain style. This was a style that got him really popular um, when he was working on Catwoman, and he kind of reinvented that character, this film noir kind of style. Um, he also used this in Parker. He took that to another level in that book, Parker, that series of books that he did was Parker. Um, American Discord says, I'm just here to pass big time judgment on Jay. <laughs> if you're coming in here with your, like, you're ahead of your covers, and Jay is sharing that he's a little bit behind. Oof. So there's a little bit of judgment. <laughs> is it possible to choose one out of four when it is solo? <laughs> that is a good question, my friend. That is a really good question. Sean gave a drive-by greeting. He did. That's classic, Sean. Rocky give three loves. Is he trying to sway the vote? <laughs> I love, love, love love Darwin Cook. Darwin Cook, like, yeah, he's upper echelon of comic book artists for me. I think Batman Animated is on Netflix. Yep. And uh, if you have HBO Max, or Max as they call it, you can watch all the Batman Animated and Batman Beyond. Every single Batman Animated thing is out there and Batman Beyond. It's like him, Darwin Cook, he could have easily turned into like a Bruce Tim clone because he worked with Bruce Tim. There's some similarities in their art, but both of those guys are phenomenal comic book artists for different reasons. Um, 
So yeah, I love both. Of, yeah, they, those guys are kings in my mind as far as um, animators slash comic book artists, storytellers. So good. Art and Times of J. Ryan loved Darwin, was fortunate enough to meet him a few times. Really, it was one of the few times when the don't meet your heroes things was 100% wrong. He was great to talk to. I've heard that he was salty, but that he was such a sweetheart and like just a good dude. So that store I was talking about earlier, Isotope Comics, the owner, James, um, how do you pronounce James' last name? Symes? Seems? Um, he was good friends with Darwin and really hurt or really sad when Darwin passed away even still talks about it like fondly about Darwin. So yeah, he was buddies, like they were close friends. So he's, he's told, he's mentioned a lot of things about Darwin and just what a good dude he was. So I'm sad that I never got to meet him. I'm glad that you had a great experience meeting him. Um, Art and times of J Ryan. I did meet Bruce Tim once and that dude is super salty, uh, super crusty, <laughs> kind of, dashed my dreams a little bit but i still his his talent is so huge that i kind of overlook that but he's not the friendliest guy and people that i know that know him and have worked with him say he's not the friendliest guy he's just he's like a curmudgeon um that's just his personality but i'm glad to hear that darwin cook was very kind to you um i met i have met let's see some of the cool artists that i've met i've met um jeff darrow very nice guy. I met Dave Stevens. Super nice guy. Really nice. I was very fortunate to meet him. I know Shant has met him too. I wonder if we met him at the same time. I can't remember. I don't think so. But um, Kevin Nolan, incredibly humble dude. I met Kevin Nolan at a con and I had him sign this Doctor Strange poster that he had done. And I was like geeking out when I saw him. I was like, oh my gosh, Kevin. And there was like no lines around him. And he was taken aback a little bit. He was like, oh, you know who I am? And I'm like, yeah, you're Kevin Nolan. Like you are a legend. I was like, everybody loves you. And he was like, oh, like he was a really humble guy. So um, he was great. Who else have I met? Um... Steve Scross, I met him way early on, um, but he was very nice. Uh, trying to think. I haven't met any of the, like, I know Shelby has great stories, but I haven't met any of the great, like, the image dudes. I don't think I met any of them, like the big ones. Um, I know Shant has a great story about Todd McFarlane and meeting him, how it changed his life. I did meet Michael Golden once. Not like I didn't have a long conversation with him. He was he's kind of in that curmudgeon territory. So I didn't want to like poke the bear. Um sorry, getting back to this. You can see like this particular story has a very animated, simplified, clean line style. And Darwin would he had this great ability of going like very cartoony and then very serious and kind of gritty with his work, which is amazing. This reminds me of his, like, Batman Beyond. <laughs> it feels a little dated now, but this kind of stuff. So good. Oh, I remember this story. This Batman story is awesome. Did you guys ever see Batman Ego, that book? That's an amazing Batman story that Darwin did. This is a great Batman story. I love, 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 love this story, <laughs> John. <laughs> Great colors, great style. Okay, Darwin Cook. There's the dude. Wow, this is sad. They all passed away. And then the final book is Mike Allred of Madman fame. Um, I know Mike Allred's working on a Batman series right now. I did meet Mike Allred. I met him and his wife at a con. Very nice people. Really, really nice people. Found out at the con that Mike Alred, that's when I found out that he was, that he's actually colorblind, which is crazy because when I think of Mike Alred, I think of um, how like poppy his color work is. And then you come to realize like, oh, it's his wife. Laura Alred always colors his stuff. And, uh, but yeah, he's colorblind if you guys didn't know that. 
five loves now. <laughs> Parker was an amazing adaptation. It really was. Uh, did you get that martini edition? I didn't get the martini edition, Art and Times of J. Ryan. I did get this cool number zero. Wait, let me get it. It was like a Parker Prelude. I got this at a con. I don't know if they sold this anywhere. I don't know if they sold this at a store, but the man with the getaway face. So cool. I love it. It's in the Parker style, obviously. Really cool. Man, so good. Oh, I love Darwin stuff. Uh, sorry, getting distracted, <laughs> as always. We're talking about Mike Allred here. Nine loves now. <laughs> so much judgment going around. Jay's busy designing amazing stuff for sure. For Disney, I'm sure. John, Jay, and Shelby are doing a 52 sketch cover challenge, so there's some competition going on. Friendly competition is good. Wait, John? Not John, John. John, are you doing a 52 co sketch cover challenge? Am I getting you confused with another John? Look at Rocky dropping names. I'm not dropping names. The most famous comic book artist I know is Sean. <laughs> That's, that's the name drop right there. Uh, when I talked to Darwin, he was very upfront about how the big two took advantage of creators because they knew they loved the characters. That was why he was doing his own things like Parker. Yeah, uh, I can see that for sure, for sure. He was a smart dude. Um, and I love how he was the whole package too. He wasn't just a great artist. He was a great storyteller, he was a great writer. I know he did, wrote a lot of books, like he wrote books that Tim Sale was drawing, some Superman books that Tim Sale was drawing. Um, yeah, I really wish I had met him um, because he was one of my idols. Um, oh, and I didn't finish that story. So crossing paths with him, he was competing in a different category in this animation thing. I was competing in the like online web show and he was competing in the... Uh, I think it was title sequences for animated shows. And he won for Batman Beyond and actually won for the show that I was working on. So we cross paths in that sense, but we didn't get to talk or anything like that. You met Michael Bolton. Hmm. <laughs> no. All red. Yeah, him and his wife bang a ton. <laughs> what? I need to I need to pause before I read the chat before and take it in before I speak it out. Tons of kids. I got so much of his early work, all the old school kitchen sink stuff up until around the end of Dark Horse Madman. <laughs> Shelby. <laughs> my copy of Parker is signed by him. Dang it. Dang it. Gold mine. Shelby better catch up that those kids. Did you give your kid pilk, Shelby? <laughs> I don't even know what pilk is. Milk? Pink milk? All right, Allred. Um, I love Allred's work. He, I know some people don't. He, he, it's just such a fun, he's always like playing. It just, it's just the, the pop culture of comics exudes from his work, which I really enjoy. It's so fun and, uh, yeah, he's, he just seems like a cool cat. Like, that's kind of the vibe that he gives out. And uh, there's always a sense of humor. I was really into his ecstatic series, which was they were kind of deconstructing. I, I almost say they were poking fun a little bit of, like, at the image books and the image guys, but in the X-Men world. And it was, like, the, those characters in ecstatics, they were, like, stars and, like, reality hero you know reality stars and uh, all the kind of things that they were struggling with they were like messed up they were screwed up even though people idolized them it was, it was really fun yeah batman a go-go a go-go that's like mike allrod a go-go he said that that's the kind of world he lives in and then lee allrod i think that's his i want to say that's his brother I know he writes a lot of stuff. I always see his name, and I'm pretty sure they're related. 
pre-reading is essential. <laughs> yes, lesson learned. <laughs> what did my ear just finally tune back into? Emo trash says, I don't know. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> hey, hey, Unhinged, how are you, man? I've really been enjoying your um, your quick draw streams uh, that you did. I just watched your Venom one this morning. So um, thanks for doing that. I love the format. I love how you're just, you've, you've got a cool a cool vibe about you, man. And I, I love how you're just drawing and talking and and uh, you're very unassuming. So I love it. I, uh, I had been in your chat in one of your streams and let you know that I, would, I backed your book. I got the uh, whatever multi-copy tier because I want to share it around with my stores here. And uh, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited about that and uh, hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming. That Miracle Man, he's a favorite of mine. All right, is all smash, never pass. <laughs> Hey, awesome one. Hello, Unhinged. Who we smashing? Not opposed, just trying to keep up. <laughs> Gotta drink another monster emo trash. I don't know. Mike Allred smashing something, according to Shelby. Did you... <laughs> I'm not reading this. <laughs> nice try. Nice try, Shelby. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. I love what you're doing. I love what you're putting out there. So I'm happy to support. We smash in coffee beans for drinks, of course. It's all all in good fun. Jason has a cool vibe. First time hearing of it. Dang. Woo. <laughs> all right. Emo trash, the like button. Yeah, nice one. Comrade Sammy. I love it. Nice one. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I loved his Madman stuff. There was just, just nothing like it. He was part of the Legend imprint under Dark Horse. So that was like Frank Miller, Arthur Adams, uh, Paul Chadwick, uh, Mike Mignola, Mike Allred, Frank Miller, Arthur Adams, Paul Chadwick, Walt Simonson. I want to say there was one more. I think Howard Chaikin was under the w Legend imprint as well. Um, so, so, yeah, it was... You know, Madman was so unlike anything out there. And it's fun because I know a lot of people say, oh, that, that artist is influenced by Kirby. And Allred definitely has a Kirby influence and stuff, but in a very different way. Like it's like the things that he takes from Kirby are apparent, but they're also very different than some other artists do. So it's cool. He's always been a clean line artist. Um and just great designer, great fun. I, if, if I had to pick one word to describe all red stuff, it would be fun. I mean, look at that guy. <laughs> and at the time I met him, which was probably, oof, the con I met him at might have been like at least 30 years ago. Um, he's a handsome dude and his wife is beautiful. Like they're just a beautiful looking couple. And he looked just like Madman. Frank in Madman did, and she looked just like uh, oh, what's the name of the girl in the in the book? I can't remember her name right now. But it was cool to kind of see, like, oh my gosh, you're like basing it off of each other. Awesome one, drop the link for Unhinged. Awesome, like and submit, and <laughs> now you're in on it. You jumped in at the right time. American Discord, you're just jealous of my vibe, dude. Wait, <laughs> I got a little nervous. Oh yeah, also Madman action figure that came with a part of a giant pit figure. It's so rare. Really? Oh, I felt I wasn't Matt Wagner part of that group too. I can't remember. I remember that they made a Madman figure, and it was pretty large size, and it came with like a disc gun, and I think a swappable head, some swappable hands, and then they also came out. The reason why I'm thinking of Matt Wagner is they came out with a Grendel figure that was approximately the same size which had swappable hands and articulation similar to the Madman figure. So I think maybe it was Graffiti Designs that put out those figures. Um, so yeah, anyway, those guys are legendary, awesome. So the the solo book, so these are the full, four ones we're gonna vote on today. I'll, I'll get the poll going in a second. Um, but Tim Sale, Richard Corbin, Darwin Cook, Mike Allred. 
The one that I'm missing that would have definitely been in this pile, and I don't know where it is, is Paul Pope. I love Paul Pope stuff. Great artist. Like a he's like he's like comics meets rock and roll. Um but I can't find that book anywhere. So I'm a little bit bummed and a little bit disturbed I can't find it. Kirby without the clunk. <laughs> That's a good descriptive description of Allred. Your school indoctrination has not set in yet. Report immediately class first thing in the morning emo trash. <laughs> oh man. Uh that's why Matt wait. That's why Matt that's always the way to get Laura. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh I will I'm always first in class, even before my professor John. I have that madman figure thinking about turning into a flash custom. Oh, that'd be cool. I mean, it's almost a blank figure, right? It's all white, uh, but that would be cool. Jay has one of those pit figures. Should ask him for a pic of it. Ah, oh, cool. That would be cool. Is uh, uh, Yeah, I'd love to see that, Jay. How could he send me a picture? Could you DM me a picture? That would be cool. Um, uh, I, th I've, I saw somebody, wasn't somebody trying to do like some bootleg pit figures recently? I can't remember, but... Pitt. Pitt is uh, another amazing creation. Dale Keown, amazing artist. Random already in interview I haven't watched. <laughs> um, okay, so let me set up the poll. So these are the four that you guys will vote on for me to do a closer look video. Let me set up the poll. Keep talking. Twitter DM. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Art and Times of J. Ryan. I don't know... If you follow me on Twitter, if I follow you, if we don't, let me know. But if you can DM me that picture, if it's not too much trouble, I'd love to see it. Um, I'm always good for a good action figure. One of my buddies, he was in, he was commenting. I know he watches my streams, um, but he was in one of the live streams I did a few months ago. Um, I just saw him uh, this evening, but he's a huge toy fan. Uh, and so I was telling him like, ah, I should get you on stream and we could talk about toys. I'm not as, I have toys, but I'm not as huge fan as he is, but yeah, I'd love to see Pitt. Shelby says, I am all over the not Pitt buying two of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Those are the ones that we were talking about. Do they have different colorways? Is that why? Uh, da, da, da. Comrade Sammy says, I'm still bitter from the past poll. Oh, Jeez, I'm not trying to, you know, cause trouble here, Comrade Sammy. Okay, let's see. YouTube. Let me... Oh, shoot. I forgot to get the... I forgot to get the uh, thumbnails. <laughs> shoot. I do this every time. I keep forgetting to get the thumbnails. I do have one thumbnail, I thought. I thought I had the Tim Sale thumbnail. Uh, sort of. Okay, let me let me search for these thumbnails while we're at it. This is hard with all the screams in the way. Screens in the way. Uh, I can send you a pic, but it's now on Hulk custom. <laughs> oh shoot. Jay changes all his figures into the Hulk. <laughs> uh, are you turning one of those pits into the Hulk, right, Shelby? <laughs> Have you changed Captain Marvel into Hulk, Jay? Could. Same body type. He needs it of him on the scooter. This, unfortunately, is dem democracy. Should we revolt? Are we talking about the poll? <laughs> We can have the contact, the sleeping mark to have him vote again. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I think the new rule I'm going to do, usually I was closing at midnight Pacific Standard Time, but then for those of the East Coasters that were already asleep, they couldn't vote, kind of screwed things up. So I'm going to close my poll like I did last week on noon tomorrow for the voting. Um, so yeah, so Mark will, he'll be okay with that, I hope. Let me see. Okay, let me get to this window. Oh, I know. One thing I can show you guys while I'm doing this search for these images is, um, hmm. Hmm? Oh, wait, wait, 
because uh, I did my last closer look video was for Ghost Machine. And I don't know if you guys saw this promo, but it's a pretty cool promo. It's only three minutes long, so I was going to play it. I hope it doesn't get struck. I don't think it should. I, I can't imagine they'd strike, strike something like this. But uh, what I do is I thought I could play it for you guys to watch. And um, uh, yeah, and then I'll, I'll search for the images. But it's really cool to kind of see them interview the the uh, creators and talk a little bit about Ghost Machine. Um, I know a few of you guys were in the premiere that I had of my review on Rook Exodus. Highly recommend that book. Um, they talk about a couple other books that I also have, Red Coat and Geiger in this. So, so yeah, let me play this for you while I look for the images for the poll. All right, let's see. Let's do this. and helmets trying to survive in this crazy world. If you like action, adventure, westerns, fantasy, 80s cartoons, and classic sci-fi, Rook has all of that. This planet Exodus was a utopia where technology controlled every aspect of nature, including the animals. And these wardens were set up to control the animals. Each of the wardens has a helmet that looks like the animal that they can control. Rook has that scavenger instinct of crows and swine, you know, he takes on those traits of pigs and direwolves. He's more of a regal pack hunter. But the world engine broke, and everyone who could force you left, and the only people left on Exodus were the employees brought there. You have characters controlling wild creatures battling for the future of this planet. I've never seen Jay unleash himself like this. I'm really trying to draw a bold, epic story. I want readers to want to go to this world, smell the air, and feel the heat. I'm really excited about that book. I can't wait for people to check it out. All of us here at Ghost Machine love Red Coat. The unnamed universe starts in 1776 when he accidentally becomes immortal. Whose adventures are painted across the canvas of American history. It's no more historical documentary than Pirates of the Caribbean or Indiana Jones. Is. And I suppose that's the tone we're going for. Big action adventure, a lot of fun. He's an absolute scoundrel, a rebel. Unwittingly a bit of an idiot. Arrogant. Very flawed. Sometimes pathetic. <laughs> but you just can't help but love him. He's going to interact with the young Albert Einstein. Who is trying to get Simon to teach him magic. And he's going to team up with Davy Crockett to fight Sasquatches. He's not looking to rule the world. He's not looking to save the world. He stumbles in and out of other people's world-ending dramas. Geiger, number one, kicks off this new monthly series that centers around Geiger's mission to find a cure for himself. For me, the satisfaction of this is delivering the story as potent a way as possible. I've never seen an artist put so much acting in characters than Gary Frank. The art is cinematic. Brad, we call him the master of light because of his colors. It's a lot of mood, and I really try to play out what the story demands. He can make Geiger even glow during the day. And then when Rob comes on and does the lettering, it has a whole other layer to it. For the first issue of Geiger, we had a double page spread that was just going to be the Geiger logo. But I wanted to give a sense of place, so I found this abandoned maintenance building. It had this great rusted steel door. I snapped a bunch of photographs and crafted that Geiger logo that looks like it was welded on that rusty background. And the Geiger series starts to open the world of your name. That includes Red Coat, First Ghost, the Northerner, and Junkyard Joe. It's really liberating to have that scale to build this epic story. Pretty cool, right? Was there an echo? Ah, uh, dang it. Was there an echo? Sorry. <laughs> dark mode for the win. I, I'm not a big fan of dark mode. Uh, I don't know if it's my eyes. I always fall asleep. I feel like I'm going to fall asleep if I look at dark mode. 
at night when there's like when you're driving dark mode's pretty good but just need to dye my hair blue and my conversion will be complete <laughs> just in case you miss it the first time uh dark mode bathroom break all right all right cool all right i think i have okay let me just make sure i think i got all my images um community poll let me which one is it this one nope <laughs> that's the wrong safari window nope i don't want to see multiple videos in myself thank you very much this there we go okay and then i'm gonna make this a little bigger like so and open it up like this just make sure you guys can see Okay, good enough. And then uh, let me, yeah, let me just see if those comments still don't show up. Oh, the comments are showing now, Comrade Sammy. I guess YouTube had a little hiccup. Oh, wait. No, this is only Mark's comment. See, all the other comments aren't showing. So strange. It's still messed up. All right, let me copy this and I'll change the poll to be noon so image poll poll closes at noon pst date tomorrow is 4 18 noon psat uh, pst okay so option one is oh wait i think i can just drag and drop nope <laughs> option one is okay and this is solo Tim sale. Option two is oh. solo Richard Corbin. Option three is the name of that oh it's got a weird name 41 something something I'll reposition the image you guys know me I don't like the weird darn cook and last one is Reposition images. That one's okay. Kind of okay. <laughs> I'll do this. Darwin Cook. Yeah, we'll focus more on the character. That one's good. That one's good. Okay. Save images. Oops. Solo. Michael Allred. And that's it. Vote for the book you want me to review closer from my Wednesday comics. It's not my haul. Poll closes at noon tomorrow. I think that's it. So there we go. I'm going to post. Hopefully this works. Um, hopefully the community tab doesn't go bananas. And... Uh, I think it's posted. Just double check. All right, it's posted, guys. Go and vote.
bathroom break. Oh no, that's old. Uh, da, 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 uh, echo. Rocky, are we going to go leave a comment for Mark? <laughs> Should I? I mean, I'm giving him a little bit of time. I can. That would be hilarious. So last time, uh, for those of you who didn't know, um, uh, because Mark was not able to join the stream because he's on the East Coast, and he was asleep. He wasn't getting, he has problems getting notifications. And so I just commented on one of his YouTube videos to tell him to go vote on my YouTube video. <laughs> it was like the most roundabout, roundabout stalker way to get a guy to vote for. But I think it worked. So maybe I'll do it again. I'll just keep commenting on that same video that he has. Oh, hey, I just got the stream note. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so you'll get this community poll notification in like a week. Yep, banning creative channels for having opinions. Artists are persnickety, really? <laughs> There's no such thing as a sane artist either. If one claims to be, they are lying. That's true. Thank you, John. That's the link for the post. Everybody vote. Not showing again, need to rebuke. Ah, oh, sorry, let me see, let me double check. Well, it's showing. We already got two votes. Saw. Um, so hopefully that works for you, awesome one. Two votes. Yeah, go vote for that. Um, but yeah, that'll be cool. I love, I, I'm sure with all these artists, let me make sure. I think with all these artists, I have other stuff too that I can kind of supplement if I need to. Definitely have a lot of stuff for Tim Sale, a lot of stuff for Darwin. Do I have my Michael Red stuff? Hmm. Do I either have it or it's in storage somewhere. And I think I have a few Richard Corbin things. Um, but yeah, all great artists. None of them I would mind doing the closer look video on. All right. There we go. It's starting to starting to divide. So the worst thing that could happen, I don't even know if I should mention this, but what happened a couple weeks ago is there was a tie and I had to do a couple videos. That almost killed me. So don't do that again. <laughs> or I'm going to have to rethink this poll thing. But um and I know Comrade Sammy was kind of the leader of that. So um but yeah. I'll leave it up to the I'll leave it up to the comic gods to sort that out. They did last time. Art and Times of J. Ryan says, to be a comic artist, you have to be a little bit crazy to do this stuff. You kind of do. Uh, and the crazy thing is, is it's like, you even see some of these artists, it's a little depressing. You see some of these artists that have such a huge, incredible career that like, you know, impacted us as kids as we were reading comics. And they're like struggling now or like, they can't get a job in comics now because they're not the hot new thing. It's really sad. I, I appreciate like people like Frank Miller who love it or hate it. He reinvents himself and he's carved his own path. And granted, he is one of the greatest of all time to do it. So he has that reputation that can kind of push him through. But there's some artists that arguably had similar you know, lauded careers as Frank and just kind of fell away. Like, I mean, I think of like Steve Ditko, I think of all like Jack Kirby, like those guys were the Kings. They were the best. There was nothing better than them. And some of them died poor, you know, and just got raked across the coals. So I think creator owned, that's why I love what ghost machine is doing. This creator owned, they're, they're creating new stories, creating new, worlds and they have a stake in the game same with all the crowdfunding stuff the cg stuff um that makes a lot of sense it makes a lot of sense in this day and age for artists to do that to have a, a stake in the game and to own what you create john says which one does rocky love again <laughs> i love all of them i love all comics not all comics but i love all these john's link works but the tab doesn't update youtube to be an artist period requires meeting the standard of insanity. <laughs> All those Renaissance painters and sculptors, not sane. Yeah. Uh, I went to a Van Gogh exhibit in when I was in Paris 
And it was an exhibit, I think of the last, it was either the last two or one year of his life. So literally as he dove into insanity, um, and not literally dove into, as he literally became insane. And, uh, it was incredible. And you just see all these people like ooing and awing his artwork, but can't imagine the torment that that guy was going through right before he died. Unbelievable. It's just like, uh, musicians too, right? All those great musicians that die when they're like 33, <laughs> it's like Kurt Cobain and like Hendrix and, uh, uh, Amy Winehouse, all those like stars that shone too bright. Van Gogh is our role model of insanity or sanity. <laughs> Comments register, but do not show. Hmm. Oh, you're talking about the stake in the game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they stripped mine the talent and left them with nothing in the end. I know, it's it's uh it's sad. It's sad. Hopefully it won't be like that for us, right, guys? All right, looks like Darwin's winning. I love, love, love Darwin. Unhinged love, love, love steak. <laughs> Where I, I think steak should have been one of the things we vote on. I had a good smash burger today, actually, near the comic book store I went to. So if you go to Mission Comics, there's a smash burger place right next to it called, this is a shameless plug, called Wes's. Um, but it was good. It was good. It's affordable. Good. Van Gogh was not okay. All right, show vans, who's firing up the ground? <laughs> uh, that would be weird at this time of day, but hey, whatever, to each his own. When you got to get steak, you got to get steak. All right, so the poll is active. It is moving along. We've got five votes in. 60% Darwin Cook. Tim Sale, Richard Corbin, man, straggling behind. It's all right. It's all right, Corbin. We love you. And uh, Mike Allred is in the mix as well. Hmm, my comment is failing in the poll. I know, awesome one. This must be like the bane of your existence because I know you love putting in the comments. See, I can't even read any comments. I'm upset about that. Hopefully it clears out tomorrow. It's been weird today, but hopefully it clears out tomorrow. Comrade Sammy says, oh, here we go. Let's tie. <laughs> if you can see this, the comments are, okay, I can see it in my notifications. I can't see it in the comment. It's weird. It's okay. It'll clear up tomorrow. I'm, I'm positive, right? All right. Well, that's what I got. Um, let me just make sure I got everything else in the chat. Where are you? Need to work your magic. Comment failing. Van gone. Comments are busted. He van went. <laughs> if people weren't sleeping, I didn't have to draw. I'd fire up the grill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you could pull that off dude i think you could do it it's, grill's not that loud <laughs> it's not that loud you could do it especially i mean you're gonna be outside right so it's not that loud maybe i have spam comments they'll show no 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 youtube took a took a dip earlier today did it now all right well um Cool. It was great hanging out with you guys. I'm just, let me make sure I don't have anything else to show in the meantime. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, it was great. I will check the poll noon tomorrow, PST. So there is still time for YouTube not to go crazy and for Mark to get his vote in, maybe I will, after this stream, jump in his comments and just let him know. Um, and go check out Sean's new channel. I haven't even checked out that the new link that he posted, so I will go check that out. Um, buy Ghost Machine stuff, support those guys. I mean, I know they're big time and they kind of have their thing going, but they... Uh, they're doing this independent route as independent as they can be. Um, and so I would support them. If you haven't watched my, if you weren't watching my premiere video for Rook Exodus, check that out because it's a great book, really good looking book. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Just kind of fell off there. I need a monster. I need a Keurig. I need an espresso. Um, 
because my brain just kind of stopped working for a second. All right, last comments. Here we go. Day on vacay. I made some prime rib with a coffee rub and burn. Ooh, coffee and prime rib. That sounds good. And burned and baked them amazing steaks. Mmm, that sounds good. I think we're going to have to do a stream where we trade recipes. That would be amazing. Dang, Skippy. Not seeing is part of the fun. Great stream. Thanks, Unhinged. I'm checking out your stuff, so keep doing what you're doing. And uh, we'll keep pushing this boulder along. Ciao. God bless y'all. Thanks, Rocky, in the chat and drive-by greeting Shant. I think Shant is doing, he should be doing a pizza live tomorrow on Thursday. So check it out. Um, those are always fun. We are talking about, Shant and I are talking about doing a stream together, maybe similar to how he does pizza live, um, to watch Pride of the X-Men. And then there was another movie that he shot my way. I was like, oh, we should totally watch that one. So there might be a couple we'll do. I definitely want to stream with Shant again. That's super fun. So uh, hopefully we'll do that. And... Um, so yeah, uh, hope you guys have a good week. Happy Wednesday for those of you who are still in it. And I will catch you around soon. Take care. Bye-bye.